Let's try this again. How's Chicago doing out there? Come on now, Chicago. We were from, we were from Chicago. We came a long ways here to have the privilege of leading you guys to worship and to raise up not just a good sound, but a holy sound. That's a difference, a godly sound. I want you guys to know something. You are not here by chance tonight. In fact, I don't believe the word chance, the word random, the word luck should exist in a Christian's vocabulary. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 18 that the Lord in heaven decreed that the evil king Ahab would, would be put to death. He decreed it. He ordained it. A few verses down, the Bible says that someone shot a random arrow. It goes up and it comes down and it hits him right in between his breastplate by luck on earth but in heaven it was decreed you're not here by chance brother and sister Lord has ordained you he has something for you tonight I don't know where you're at what you're struggling with what's on your mind but we're gonna we're gonna sing tonight we're gonna lift up a sweet song unto the Lord we're gonna worship his name don't look at us Look to the skies. His name is Jesus. Amen. So we just want to lead you guys. Join us as we come. And we're going to sing his name. We praise you, Lord God.
Then sings my soul. Then sings my soul. the greatest of the love of God. Father, we worship you tonight. We have decided to follow you, Lord. That's why we're here tonight. We're here for you, Lord God. We're also here for us because we want to hear from you tonight. I thank you for all these young people who came from far away. Pray that you bless every single word, every single note, every single sound. It is for your glory, Jesus. We worship your holy name. 
Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going to remain standing. I just want to read a few verses from uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, starting with verse 36. Those of you who have your Bibles, it's just a portion of the passage we have for tonight. 1 Kings chapter 18, starting with verse 36. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel. That I am your servant, and I have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me. So these people will know that you, Lord, are God. And that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, hallelujah. The wood, the stones, and the soil, and also dried up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. My name is uh, Pastor Adi Tisha. I come from Elim Church in Chicago. It is an honor for me to be here tonight. Uh, I want to thank uh, Pastor Benny Bora for giving me this great opportunity and giving us this opportunity to minister to you. We want to bless you in the name of Jesus and also the local church here has done great sacrifices over the years to hold uh, uh, this event and we want to thank you and we honor you today in the name of Jesus. May God bless you and reward you for everything you do. Amen. I want to speak tonight about three things. Um, drought, fire, and rain. And I hope you know the story, and I'm sure you do, most of you do. It's a long story. Uh, Many, many things happening, every, every passage, every, every verse of this uh, um, uh, two or three chapters um, are so powerful and so full of God's uh, miracles and, and the, the things that God has done. But mainly I want to talk uh, tonight about these three things, drought, fire, and rain. Now in the natural... We know what these things are. Drought is a time when there's no rain. And throughout history, all the nations of the world have depended on, uh, have depended on a consistent rain cycle. It has to rain in order for the crops to grow. And it's never a good news when there's a drought coming. Drought is a period when there's no rain. During a period of drought, people get thirsty and the land gets thirsty. Many times in the Bible you will hear the saying, uh, the thirsty land. That's drought. Fire. What's fire? We all know what fire is. Fire is a state of burning in which chemical substances combine with oxygen from the air, they give out bright light, heat, and smoke. That's fire. Rain. What's rain? We all know what rain is. Rain is when moisture from the sky falls to the ground in the form of drops. And uh, these three terms have a physical meaning, but also have a spiritual meaning. 
And I want to talk about it tonight. If there's physical drought, there's also spiritual drought. If there's physical fire, there's also a spiritual fire. If there's physical rain, there's also spiritual rain. When we talk about spiritual drought, you will find in many places in the Bible. And it has a very important uh, meaning. Most of the times in the Bible when you read about drought, it was a punishment from God. It was a lack of God's blessings. And most of the times drought came or drought was allowed or sent by God. It came as a result of idolatry. I want to read from Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 16 and 17. He says, be careful you or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. God says, be careful. Don't ever be tempted to worship other gods. And if you do, this is what will happen. Verse 17, then the Lord's anger will burn against you. That means God gets mad when you worship other gods. Amen. The, Lord, the Lord's anger, God gets angry. The Lord's anger will burn against you and he will shut up the heavens so that it will not rain and the ground will yield no produce and you will soon perish from the good land that the Lord is giving you. Most of the times in the Bible where there was a, per when there was a period of, of, of drought, it came as a result of idolatry idolatry if you're taking notes you can write this down if you worship other gods the almighty god will send drought into your life and this has a spirit i'm talking about spiritually we're not talking about here, it's not going to ra rain on your little flower that you just plant, uh, planted in, the, in your backyard. That's not what I'm talking about. But God is saying that if you worship anything, and when we say idols, uh, you know, we don't mean you have a little sculpture in your bedroom or a little painting that you worship. That's old-fashioned. We know what idols are today. Come on now. Anything that takes the place of God in your life is an idol. If you worship it, God will set drought in your life. Now, I didn't come here tonight to, to uh, scare you, but that's the word of God. God says, if you worship anything or anybody other than me, I will send drought in your life. I said it many times to you young people. Listen, if you are running away from the Lord... And you have a mother and a father who's praying for you. Forget it, man. You're going to get in trouble. And God's going to allow trouble and drought and heat in your life. If you have a grandmother who doesn't know how to shut up, oh, man. She just prays all the time. But, if, you know, the Bible says when you worship anything or anybody other than me, I will send drought in your life. You know the story that we're talking about tonight. The story of Elijah. You know what happened. Because of idolatry. And an idolatry was an old thing in the land of Israel. In the, in the nation of Israel. There always has been in the history of Israel an idolatrous party. A group of people who didn't believe in God. There's always been in the history of Israel an idolatrous worship running side by side with the true worship of God. From the time of Abraham, Abraham's father was an idol worshiper. In the time of Moses, they worshiped idols. Remember the golden calf. 
They went into the wilderness and they worshipped idols. In the land of Egypt, they worshipped idols. They went into the promised land and they worshipped idols. They went into Canaan and they worshipped idols. Because if you don't kill your enemy in the past, if you didn't kill him in the past, he comes after you. And follows you. And this has been one of the biggest problems that stayed with this nation. They loved to worship idols. There's a passage in uh, um, Psalm chapter 106 verse 35 to 37. He says, But they mingled with the nations and adopted their customs. They worshipped their idols. Now this is talking about Israel. Children of God, they worshiped their idols which became a snare to them. And watch this. They sacrificed their sons and daughters to false gods. We're not talking about the Egyptians here. We're talking about the children of Israel. Do you wonder why in our passage for tonight, God allows drought? Because they worshiped idols. David's wife, uh, the daughter of Saul, possessed idols. Solomon and his wives worshipped idols. Then we get to our text tonight. They worshipped idols. Ahab is a king of Israel. He's the king of Israel now. Nothing wrong with him so far, but he has a problem. He gets married to a girl. And her name is anybody? Jezebel. I didn't know if I should talk about this a little bit. I know Brother Ed is very good in talking about marriage and stuff. God bless you, brother. You're good. I remember last year's sermon. Powerful stuff. Ahab is the king of Israel. And he marries Jezebel. When you first look at it, he probably said, man... What a catch. And I have to talk about this because most of you are single. And this is important. Ahab looked at this girl. The Bible says she's the daughter of a prince. She is a princess. She's a daughter of a king. I'm sorry. She is a princess. And, you know, I, I could just think, you know, he probably says, I'm a king and I get to marry a princess. What a catch, right? And on top of it, the Bible says that she is religious. Come on. How many of you guys don't want a religious wife to be? Right? More than that, a prorochitsa man. She's a prophet. How many of you guys, don't raise your hand. How many of you guys would not like to marry a prorochitsa? Come on, somebody. Huh? She's a princess. She's the daughter of a king. She is religious. She loves prophets. She's got 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of, of, of uh, uh, Ezra eating at her table. She feeds these prophets. But she fought the unbelievable. <laughs> at the first look, it's unbelievable. What a catch. The problem, however, is, and if you read the story, we don't have to go into it. Jezebel is an idol worshiper. She is a control freak. We don't have time to go into the story where, where she kills Naboth for, and steals his property. You know the story. I, I hope you do. Go home and read it. How snaky this girl is. And I put here, if you're taking notes, write this down. You can mess up your life and your calling by marrying the wrong person. Jezebel. She even had a cute name, right? No, it's not. Don't ever. If you have a daughter, don't ever name her Jezebel, all right? And guys, don't ever date a girl named Jezebel. Something's wrong there, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> Some, Something's, you know... She represents, if you're taking notes, write this down and look for these red flags in someone's life. She represents the spirit of control, manipulation, 
seduction, intimidation, domination, and idolatry. Anytime you see any of these things in a girl or a guy. Because here we're not talking about a girl. We're talking about a spirit. It's the spirit of Jezebel. All right? When you see control, if she's a control freak, brother, run, baby, run as far as you can and don't look back. Amen. She wants to control you in anything you do. Ahab said, man, I'd like to have that property, but I can't. He won't sell it to me. Don't worry about it, honey. I'll take care of it. She stones the guy to death, kills the guy. Oh, go ahead and plant your, uh, we, have, we have the property. We got it. I like to control everything. You never get to say where you go out to eat. She always has to pick. I don't know. Control, manipulation, seduction. We're going to talk about these things very quickly. This is not the uh, main message. We're talking about Elijah tonight, but I, 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 I couldn't pass by this. Come on. Seduction, intimidation, domination, idolatry. Two chapters later, she kills the prophets of God. This cute little princess. Prorochita Nostra. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 20. Write this verse down and pay attention. The Bible tells us here three things, three of the main problems that the spirit of Jezebel brings and has. Three. Number one, it says, and it talks about her in the book of Revelation. But I have a few things against you. Problem number one. You permit. Everybody say you permit. You, uh, you got to do better than that. You permit. you permit. You permit. Remember that. You permit, number one problem, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess. Number one problem is with people who says they are something they're not. She says she's a prophetess, but she's not. She's a false one. It is the spirit of Jezebel. When he tells you he's something he's not. When she, because we're not just talking about girls here. Again, I say that. It's a spirit. When he claims he's a Christian, come on now. When she says, I love God, and you allow her to say it, and to pretend that she is, but you know that she is not. That's problem number one. You permit Jezebel to call herself something she's not. Problem number two. Next slide, please. You permit... Her to seduce, next slide please, my, there you go, to seduce my servants to commit, to commit sexual immorality. Zice, tu lași pe românește scrie, să amăgească pe robii mei să se dea la curvie. This is the second problem, she seduces you. Or he seduces you. And you permit that person to seduce you to commit sexual immorality. Whatever that may mean. And you know what it means. I don't have to go into details. We're adults here. Come on. If, listen, if you are dating someone who is seducing you to commit sexual immorality that is the spirit of Jezebel run and run fast I mean run away fast some of you are laughing and you know I'm talking about you problem number two you permit her to seduce you, are, you, you say you're a servant of God. She seduces you. Listen. If you are with a girl because she seduces you. If you are with a girl because she is irresistible. 
that's not healthy for you that's the spirit of Jezebel if you are with a guy and you cannot control yourself around him that's the spirit of Jezebel that's what it says here you allow him or her to tempt you to seduce you it's a big problem about young people you think oh I'm so in love no you're not in love you're being seduced if you cannot control yourself when you're around that person she's not right for you there's something wrong there second Kings chapter 9 and verse 22 talks about Jezebel and her many sorceries now I know we're in church and I know some of you don't believe in this stuff but omunește Izabela și mulțimea vrăjitoriilor ei sorceries that means you know what sorceries are right they put spells on people they make you do things you don't want to do. I talk to young people and they say, brother, I didn't want to do it. I just, I just couldn't help it. And then they come again and they say, I didn't want to do it again. I just couldn't help it. She's so irresistible. Run away. It's a spirit of Jezebel trying to ruin your life. Ahab married this girl. And because of it, he and the whole nation was dragged into idolatry and because of idolatry the drought came we're talking about the drought but we got to go deeper than that we got to go to the roots where did it start you know what it started he started with a young man marrying a princess a religious prorochitza at least that's what she says she is No wonder they say love is blind. Dragostea poate fi o vrajă. Do you know that? I, this is heavy stuff, guys. Dragostea poate fi o vrajă. Când nu mai ai control, there's a spirit behind it. If she, if she or he makes you to commit things that are immoral, there's a spirit, the spirit of Jezebel behind it. Problem number two. Problem number three, real quickly. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20 says here that she eats the food sacrificed to idols. Mănâncă din lucrurile jertfite idolilor. She's an idolater. She worships idols. I had to say this and I have to, I want to close this subject of marriage. We're not talking about marriage tonight, all right? But I had to say this. I couldn't forgive it. I couldn't just leave it aside. Guy messed up his life and messed up the, the life of a nation because he married the wrong girl who at first looked like she's such a catch. And I say it again. If you worship other gods, God will send drought into your life. God will send drought into your life. If you're experiencing some if you're experiencing heat in your life right now, drought in your life right now, problems, there's no rain, there's no blessing. We're going to talk about the rain a little bit later. Rain represents blessings. Every time you read about rain in the Bible, most of the times it talks about blessings. The blessings of God who he's pouring down on his people. If there's no blessings in your life, maybe you're an idol worshiper. Maybe you're worshiping something or somebody other than God and God will send drought in your life fire we talked about drought let's talk about fire um, just like fire just like there is a physical fire just like we said there's also a spiritual fire and sometimes the physical fire comes as a result of drought. If you live in the West Coast, right, where it's drought, our brothers from California, they can tell every year you get this wildfire. So why do they, how, you know, drought, they come because of drought. So everything dries. 
the trees dry, the bushes dry. And all it takes is just a little spark and the fire comes. So drought brings fire in the physical. In the spiritual, it's not the same. True spiritual fire never starts because of drought or because of heat. But it always starts because of God. And here, I know fire has many, many meanings. I know fire, there's a meaning, there's a bad meaning of fire. When you're in fire, you're in trouble. No, that's not what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about the fire of God who came upon the sacrifice. In the passage that we read, the fire was a sign of God accepting the offering. You understand? When the fire came down, it was clear that God accepted the offering. So we're talking about the fire of God. The fire of God never comes as a result of the dry, of the drought. God brings the fire of God in people's lives. It's very important to know. That's why Elijah said, bring some buckets of water. You ever wonder why did he tell him, told him uh, three times? He said, bring me some water. What do you want to do with the water? There hasn't been no rain in three and a half years. Water is so precious. He said, bring me some water. What do you want to do with it? He said, soak the sacrifice. What? Soak it. Then they poured water on the sacrifice, on the wood, and on the sacrifice, on the altar. Then he said, do it again. Soak it again. And they did it the second time. And then he said, do it again once more, three times. Soak it. I want water all over it. Why? Because I want you to know that the fire that's about to come does not come as a result of the drought. There's a God in heaven who's going to bring the fire. Amen. And it is going to be the same in your life. And again, we're talking about the fire of God in your life, not as a punishment. Because fire has different meanings. I already said that. I'm talking about the fire of God in your heart that changes your life. It's not going to start as a result of the drought you were in because you were punished. No. God is going to have to bring it as a result of what? Some of you will say prayer. Because Elijah prayed, right? And the fire came. Well, the problem is... 850 prophets prayed as well and the fire didn't come so what's the lesson here prayer is not enough to bring the fire of God upon your life it's not enough if it, if it was enough when the 850 prophets prayed fire would have came down so what brings it it's not prayer alone you would say sacrifice because Elijah brought a sacrifice. Well, the problem is the 850 prophets brought a sacrifice. And many of you came ready tonight and you say, I'm going to pray and God's going to send his fire into my heart. Well, prayer is not enough. Some of you came from far away and you said, I brought a sacrifice. I play in a band. Come on, you know how hard it is. That's a sacrifice. I'm bringing it to God. But you know what? Sacrifice is not enough either. So prayer and sacrifice don't cut it. There's something else that needs to happen in order for the fire of God to come inside your life. Because see, now we're not talking about here bringing a, a bowl uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a sacrifice for God. You are the sacrifice. The altar is inside of your heart. And that's where God has to sense the fire to confirm that it's accepted. Because listen to me, not every sacrifice is accepted unto God. Amen. Like it or not, that's the truth. So it's not prayer by itself and it's not sacrificed but there's also something else that needs to happen. What brings the sacrifice? I have a word and I, if you're taking notes write this down. Lordship. Lordship. That's what made the difference. What does it mean? A supreme power over you when you make him the Lord of your life. 
because 850 false prophets pray but they never made him lord over their lives and the fire never came 850 prophets brought the sacrifice but the fire never came you know why because he did, they didn't make him the lord of their lives but when elijah said you are my lord that's when the fire came down lordship so i want to ask you do you want the fire of god in your life and I want to ask you another question. Have you made him the Lord and Savior of your life? Because prayer alone won't cut it. Sacrifice or whatever else you do for the Lord, band or Sunday school or whatever else you do, works, won't cut it. Is he the Lord of your life? Is he in control of your life? Supreme power over you. Brother Eddie was saying last night, uh, a deep relationship with God is what's going to do it. Elijah had it. And that's what brought the fire down. It's not the prayer. Because they prayed. It's not the offering. They brought the offering. What's the difference? Is he the Lord of your life? Is he the Lord of your life? Oh, Lord, I want the fire. And I pray. Good. But is he the Lord of your life? So what does Lordship mean from our text? Three things real quickly. Number one, decision. Number one, decision. If you're taking notes, write this down. Decision. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 21. He says, I love this. I love this. Write this down, this verse. Elijah went before the people and said... How long will you waver between opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. Make up your mind already, he says. That's what's going to bring the fire down. Is he the Lord of your life or not? Who do you think you're goofing with here? Who do you think you're fooling? You pay, oh, I'm going to Winterfest, mom. I need a thousand dollars for the tree, for the, you know, this and this, you know. Hey, is he the Lord of your life? Is he or is he not? It gets down to this. Yes or no. Decision. Elijah said, is he the Lord? It first means decision. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Number two, restoration. Verse 30. Then Elijah said to all the people, come here with me. They came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord. I already said that now the altar is not on the stage. It's not at the pulpit. It's in your heart and in your life. And some of your altars are broken. Some of your altars are dirty. There's stuff there. There's junk there. Some things you need to take out. Some things you need to burn before God burns the sacrifice. He repaired the altar of God. Restores. Listen, some of you, tonight is the night when you need to restore your altar. Do you understand that? You need to restore the altar of God in your heart if there's going to be a fire. Decision. Make up your mind. Restoration. Fix it up. Clean it up. Restore it. Number three, obedience. Obedience. I look at this Doi, tre, man's tre. life. I'll be honest with you. He had such a strange uh, uh, journey with God. You know, I'm sure you know the story. He has so much uh, zeal for the Lord. He wants to do so many things for God. And God, the Bible says, that sent him into a closet um, and asked him to shut the door upon the world. Send him to a, into a state of inactivity. 
some of you think you're so ready to do things for the Lord and before you do mighty things for the Lord God has to such, shut you down lock you in a closet God's teaching him obedience Lord I want I'm ready Lord he said no 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 you go inside the closet and shut the door you're going to be by yourself for a while do you know what the Bible says uh, in 1st Kings chapter 17 verse 2 he says, God said to him, go and hide. And you know the story. God goes, uh, um, Elijah goes to uh, Ahab and, say, and said, it's not going to rain until I say so. And then he walks off. And he disappears. He vanishes. And the king probably looks at him and said, who is this blockhead? I mean, who is it? People, don't, he didn't know who he was. The Bible doesn't tell us much about him. Where did he come from? No, no, no. And he just disappears. And God tells him, go and hide in in the carrot ravine east of the Jordan you know what a ravine is you know what a ravine is a ravine the Bible the dictionary says is a deep crack in the ground go and hide yourself in a hole in the ground he disappeared from the king Told him it's not gonna rain until I say so. Ran away, and God now uh, tells him, "Go and hide yourself." There's a there's a crack in the ground. Go and hide yourself there. Sometimes you think you're ready to go. God's gonna put you in a closet. Say, "Wait here." He wants to see if you obey him. He told him to wait. Imagine the nights and the days. He's living like a rat in a hole. I thought, Lord, you're going to put me on a stage. No, God's sending him in, into a crack in the ground. Secondly, the Bible says that God sent a bird to feed him. What kind of bird was it? Anybody? A raven. You know what a raven is? Yeah, I don't think they do that. They, they sound like that. A ra listen. Think about this. God, if you're going to feed me through a bird, at least let it be a dove. Do you know that a raven is an unclean bird? God, it, it would have been just as easy for you to send a beautiful white dove, the symbol of the spirit. Come on now. You're sending a, 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 a raven to me to feed me? Because God teaching him obedience. You're going to accept what I bring to the table. Because this is not about you. You don't make the rules. I make the rules. And God sent a raven to feed him. Next in verse 7 he says, Sometimes later the brook dried up and became, and because there was, there was no rain in the land. Another problem. God's teaching him obedience, faith. Now, that little river that I had that I used to drink water from now is dry. What do you want me to do, Lord? You know what I want you to do? Believe in me. Trust me. We're talking about making him the Lord of your life. And that means obedience. Whatever God puts you through, uh, through you, you, you got to obey him. You're not going to understand everything. Then later on, the Bible says in verse 89, watch this, this gets interesting. It says, then the word of the Lord came to him and said, go at once to Zarephath, Zarephath in, in the region of Sidon and stay there. Watch this. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. I don't know about you, but I think that's strange. That's very strange. God said, I prepared a, a, a widow to take care of you. God sends him to live with a woman who has no husband. She's a widow. And listen, he doesn't tell us her age. She could have been 25 and actively looking for a husband. Right? God, why, did he, why didn't he say God sent him to a widower? Right? Because now, I mean, it doesn't even look good.
Maybe she's attractive. On top of it, she's an idol worshiper. She's an enemy of God by birth. God, if you're going to send me to someone's house, can you find a Christian, please? Everything goes wrong for him. And he has to obey God. On top of it, the Bible says that she is poor. I mean, he goes to her and says, can you give me a glass of water? And while you're at it, can you give me, uh, give me a, uh, just bring me a little slice of bread? And she says, oh, you know what? All I have is a handful of flour. I'm going to make a little uh, loaf of small piece of bread. Me and my son are going to eat it. Then we're going to die. God, her fridge is empty. You send me to her. Everything about this story is back. It's, it's off. Why? God's teaching him faith. You trust me. And then after you trust me in every one of these things that don't make any sense to you whatsoever. Then I'll bring the fire down. That's what lordship means. You understand that? Lordship. Lordship. Decision. You decide. Is he your God or not? We don't want to push you here this week and oh, make, you know, we don't want to force you. We don't want to brainwash you. But I want you to make a decision. And you know what? Not making a decision is a decision. Amen to that. Did you know that? Not deciding if he's the Lord of your life. You already decided he's not the Lord of your life. Decision, restoration, restore that altar, clean it up, and obedience, obey him in every situation. That's the fire, and then the fire will come. Lastly, I want to talk about the rain. We talked about the drought, how it comes as a result of idolatry. And if you're worshiping anything or anybody other than God in your life, God will allow you to go through drought and heat. We talked about the fire. The fire doesn't come because of the drought. It comes because God brings it. And he brings it only, not only when you pray. Prayer is not enough. Sacrifice is not enough. You need to make him the Lord of your life. Let's all stand together as the, as the worship band is going to come up. I'm going to close real quickly. But then we're going to pray and we're going to worship the Lord. Rain. The rain. The rain. Like I said, most of the times with the exception of few exceptions in the Bible. You know, the flood. That wasn't a blessing. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. We don't want that rain, Lord. But most of the times in the Bible, when the Bible talks about rain, it talks about the blessings of God. Um, in the physical, usually, watch this, the rain puts up the fire, puts out the fire, right? When there's a fire and the rain comes... The rain puts out the fire. In the spiritual is not the same. When you have the fire of God in your life, when the rain comes, it's like putting gasoline on fire. Come on, somebody. And the rain and the fire goes bigger and it burns more. And you have deeper relationship and experiences with God. Because the rain is coming and the blessing is coming. The blessing of God never goes against the fire. The rain never goes against the fire. They work together. And you know the story. We're not going to go into it. How he prayed. And the rain came. How he prayed before and the fire came. Because he made him the Lord of his life. And then he prayed. How many times he prayed before the rain came? Anybody? Seven times. And he sent his servant, go see, is there anything? No. Nothing. And then he prayed again. And then he sent him back, go back and check, is there anything? Nothing. 
And then he prayed again. Six times and then seven times. And he prayed again and again and again. Because you know what? When the Lord sends the fire, he will always and also send the rain. And it is actually the fire who brings the rain. You can't have the blessings if you don't have the fire. Can't have it. There's a lot of people who want the blessings, don't want the fire. There's a lot of rich people in this world. They think they're blessed. They don't have the fire of God in their hearts, in their lives. That's not happiness. Something is missing. We're going to go and start singing and worshiping the Lord. And... Um, I want all of us to really close our eyes and uh, think about ourselves and where we stand with God. Um, if you want to start playing a little bit, I want to say something before we're going to go into prayer. Some of you are struggling with things. And I want all of us to just bow our heads and close our eyes right now. We know that the Holy Spirit is here ministering to us. And if there's sin in your life, God is calling you tonight. There's a fire that He wants to pour upon you. There's the rain that He wants to send upon your life. The blessings of God. If you live in a season of drought and thirst and there's nothing growing and everything's dying because there's no rain, there's no blessing. Maybe it's because of some things that you're worshiping. Some things that are greater than your God and God is calling you tonight. If if you sin and you like it, there's something wrong with you. I didn't say if you sin, there's something wrong with you. But if you sin and you like it, there's something wrong with you. And you need to repent. If you sin and there's no conviction in your heart, there's no conviction attached to your sin, there's something wrong with you and God is calling you tonight and he wants to change your nature he wants to give you a new life that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now you know a pig is dirty because he sees mud and he wants to play in it A sheep is dirty because he sees mud and wants to come out of it and cries in the mud, not plays in it. There's a God who wants to forgive your sins tonight. There's a God who wants you to come to him tonight. If you're playing with sin, he wants to change your life. If you have fallen into sin, and you're crying right now. He's here to forgive you. The Bible says that if two or three agree on earth concerning anything, it will be done by your Father in heaven. We're going to be up here in the front with all the pastors and ministers to pray with you. If you want to experience a change in your life the bible says if two agree we're going to stand here and agree with you if you agree with me and i agree with you the bible says it will be done by your father in heaven we will stand with you we will pray with you god is calling you to surrender that's what the lordship means surrender so right now as we stand, I'd like you to invite, I'd like to invite you to come forth, whoever you are. If you need prayer, there's a God who's waiting for you to make a decision. Decide today. If He's your Lord, serve Him.
If you need to clean that altar so that the fire of the Lord can come, clean it up, restore it. Come on, you can come for it right now, whoever you are. If you need to be touched by the Lord. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. We pray against any fear. Lord, we know that it's in times like this that you minister to your people. We worship you tonight, Lord God. We depend on you. We need you tonight. I pray for these young people. I pray that you would touch them, Lord God, by the power of your spirit as they come forth, Lord God. We don't do this for a show. We don't do this so we can be seen by other people. We want to do it out of a sincere heart. We want to be changed, Lord. We want to surrender, Lord. We want the drought to end. We want the fire of God to come. We want the rain of blessings to come upon our lives, Father. Forgive us if we worshiped other gods. You are the only God. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We invite you to come forward. We're going to pray with you. The Lord is waiting. We're going to start singing. We're going to start singing. Make your way up. Make your way up to the front. We're going to pray together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we come, Lord. Oh, Father. Come on, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The Holy Spirit is talking to you. Come forward. Let us pray with you. Let us pray with you. Hallelujah. You think so, so good. Hallelujah. Come on, for Come on. For I took the bread. You breathe your life. Come on, let's come closer. Let's come closer here to the front so other people can come. Come on, closer. You have been so, so kind to me. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Holy, overwhelming.
Oh uh-huh. 
Praise God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus. It's been an amazing two nights. Somebody received a phone call today and somebody was asking, what is gonna go, what's going to happen there tonight? What's going on there tonight? And the other one says, oh, I didn't know what to tell him. Well, I said, you should tell him this. Last night, we rebuilt the altar. We rebuilt the altar last night. Tonight, we had the fire. And tomorrow, the rain is going to fall.
Just an, an announcement, then I will invite Pastor Dino over here to close the prayer. Uh, after, uh, after the prayer, they're going to keep singing because they're doing such an amazing job. And you know what? All this worship band, man, I mean, they spend too much time and practice to play for half an hour. Right? Let them play. And we're going to go to the church. We're going to have food. And then whoever wants to go to Staruinza, that is going to be an old-fashioned Staruinza. We don't have no sound system over there. And tomorrow morning we have, we're going to have a church at Bethesda. If you don't have any church to go, there are local churches, Hickory, Statesville, Huntersville. Uh, I'll go to Elevation. Go to a Romanian church. Okay? And... Uh, it's going to be an all-time service tomorrow because we, we don't have no south system over there. So you, you, you better have a good lunch. To, you know, whoever is going to be there. But whatever, after, after you're going to eat, uh, just if you're on a steroidza, go in the sanctuary. The pastors will be there. If you want to do a testimony, you can take one of the pastors, go into the office and just empty your heart. And, you know, I'm sure that God, God, God is ready to baptize you. I don't know how ready you are. Pastor Dino, I want you to come up here and close with the prayer. Then you guys go ahead. Start to start to sing. Stăpâne Doamne, înainte a sfințenie tale în seara aceasta, cu recunoștință venim să ți mulțumim. Îți mulțumim pentru dragostea pe care tu ți-ai arătat o față de noi. N-avem cuvinte să-ți mulțumim în seara aceasta că Fiul Tău, Domnul nostru Iisus Hristos, și-a părăsit slava, s-a coborât la noi și-a trăit printre noi ca și noi să putem să avem viață veșnică. Îți mulțumim că în seara aceasta tinerii care sunt în locul acesta i-ai chemat să te slujească pe tine I-ai chemat să te cunoască pe adevăratul Dumnezeu, care știe problemele și durerile, care cunoaște suferințele, care știe problemele noastre, care știe durerea din inimile noastre în seara aceasta. Te rog frumos, se liberează Tu, Doamne! Te rog frumos, atinge-te Tu în continuare de tinerii care sunt în locul acesta. Doamne, știm că trăim într-o lume unde este atât de greu ca să te slujim, unde lumea de multe ori ne atrage înspre ei, dar îți mulțumim că n-ai făcut o lumină într-o lume întunecoasă, Doamne. Te rog să faci ca tineretul acesta să fie o lumină în lumea aceasta, să fie slujitor adevărații Tăi, Doamne, și într-o zi cu toții să ne întâlnim în părăția Ta. Doamne, vreau să mă rog într-un mod deosebit pentru tineretul în seara aceasta. Știu că diavolul, Doamne, de multe ori încearcă și vrea să-i fură din pacea pe care Tu o dai. Vrea să-i fură, Doamne, din dragostea pe care Tu ne-ai oferit-o. Te rog frumos în seara aceasta, lasă ca ploaia Ta, Doamne, să curgă în inimele lor și lasă pace, Doamne, lasă dragoste, Doamne, pune bucuria Ta în inimile noastre și în inimile de fiecăruia suflet. Știm că diavolul se luptă în toate felurile ca să fure din copiii Tăi, dar îți mulțumim că Tu ne trimiți ajutor, îți mulțumim, Doamne, că Tu ești cu noi. Te rog frumos, o, Doamne, dă-ne Tu biruință, Dă-ne Tu putere să ne luptăm în lupta cea bună a credinței și când vor veni zile grele, când vor veni ceasul încercării, Doamne, mărește credința la fiecare și, Doamne, te rog din nou în seara aceasta, lasă Tu, Doamne, Duhul Sfânt în inimile noastre și lasă ca tinerii din locul acesta când vor pleca să fie cu adevărat o lumină în lumea aceasta, în numele Tatăl, în numele Domnului nostru. Iisus Hristos și în nume Duhul Sfânt îți mulțumim. Amin.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing song one again. I know it's a new song for most of you guys, so hopefully by now you got it. It's a pretty simple song. I'm a child of God. So let's lift it up together in this place. (laughs) 